What's up peeps, Lindra Fish here, and today I'm bringing you a new series on my channel called Fish's Fantastic Football Show. Pretty much the name says it itself. I talk about football. Now obviously there's Madden going on in the background, but the main thing I want you guys to focus on is what I have to say. This show is going to consist of three main parts. The first part is going to be the power rankings for each week. Pretty much who, my, who I feel the top five teams are in the NFL. Secondly, three players that played really well this week and three players that don't deserve any of the money that they're getting in their paycheck. If this was about baseball, the entire New York Yankees lineup would be right there. And that pains me to say because I'm a Yankees fan. And the last thing is where I pick every single game. One I'll go more in depth with, and that's my game of the week. And the rest of them will just be speed picks. So let's just get started right away with the power rankings. Now at number 5, I have the San Francisco 49ers. Now, this seems really good, but they gave up a huge loss to New York. I mean, Alex Smith did not play well. The defense didn't play well. They just had an off week. I don't think it's anything to be too worried about. But just for now, they're at the number five spot for me. Number four is the team they lost to, the New York Football Giants. I I told everyone from the beginning, New York Giants are going to be uh, leaders in the division. But no, everyone said, oh, Dallas or uh, Philly or maybe even Washington. No, come on. Philly can't even play football. They have great talent, but they can't play. Dallas always chokes, and this time it's not really Tony Romo's fault. He's been playing good the past two years. It's a supporting cast now with Dez Bryant's off-the-field drama and everyone dropping passes. Everyone thought after getting rid of Wade Phillips they'd be back in the Super Bowl. But no. I think they will be soon, but they just need to get their act together. In Washington, while well, I think they are a good team, uh, they are played with injuries. Uh, Brian Arakbo's out for the year. And uh, RG3 doesn't have a lot of weapons. I mean, unfortunately, that's what it comes down to. You can't win on your own. Number three team, and po um, quite possibly the most underrated team in football right now, are the Chicago Bears. That's right. Cincy. Or, not Cincy. Wow, what am I saying? Chicago. You know, you always hear, you know, Atlanta, Houston, uh, San Francisco, New York as the best teams in the NFL. No one ever mentions Chicago. I mean, they have the best points differential in the NFL. They've only given up 71 points for the first six games, and they've only lost one game, which is to a great team in the Packers. I mean, you never all you hear about them is how Jake Hutler is mad at the world and everything. But at the end of the day, they've only lost one game and they're ahead of the division. You know, everyone talked about... Minnesota uh, being good, which they are. I do give them credit for that. But Chicago's in the lead right now in their division, and no one's talking about that. Uh, one and two are really close, but I did have to give the edge to the number one team, which I'll talk about later. But the number two team are the Houston Texans. Yeah, they did get they did lose pretty badly to uh, Green Bay, but at the end of the day, you know they're still a very complete team, quite possibly the most complete team in the NFL. Uh, but unfortunately, they just didn't have a good game, and now they aren't undefeated, which doesn't really mean anything. I mean, Green Bay went almost undefeated last year and lost in the first round of the playoffs. But I guess only time will tell to see if they're a truly Super Bowl contender. And obviously now, my number one pick for the best team in the NFL are the Atlanta Falcons. These guys are on fire. Their offense is clicking like crazy with Matt Ryan having his breakout year. I mean, man, that guy's an MVP candidate right now. It's gotta be number one. Um, Tony Gonzalez, Ageless Wonder at tight end, Julio Jones, uh, Roddy White, and their defense is solid too. I mean, uh, John, John Abraham all had three sacks this week, which was great. But, um, you know, they do get a lot of love, but not their defense. And their defense has been pretty solid this year too. So now, the next part are my three hot players and my three cold players. I'm going to start with the hot. My number three hot player of the week is Peyton Manning, quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Now, Peyton Manning had a cr pretty crummy first half, which he's had a lot of uh, this year. You know, with the way he played against Atlanta on Monday Night Football, he had a crummy first half, but he picked it up in the second. Peyton Manning had a great second half against the Chargers this week on Monday Night. Only, only having one incomplete pass, going 13-14, to 14, over 150 yards and three touchdowns. He was on fire in the second half, and big reason why uh, Denver was able to pull off that comeback win. Uh, my number two hot player of the week is Sean Green, running back of the uh, Jets. Now, the Jets need to go back to a running game. Mark Sanchez can't throw the ball. He can't be trusted by throwing the ball 50 times in a game. But my boy Tim Tebow, you know, he just can't throw the ball. 
I'm a big Tim Tebow fan myself, but he he can't throw the ball. Uh, he can give a little spark, and that's what led the Broncos to the playoffs last year. But uh, Jets need to be more of a running team, and that's how Denver was last year with Tim Tebow. I wouldn't mind giving Tim Tebow a chance, but I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, Sean Green, number two player of the week. And my number one player of the week, obviously, is Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. Dude threw for six touchdowns over 350 yards and no picks in a route over the Houston Texans. Might quite possibly be in the best team in the NFL right now. Now, he really cemented himself as, you know, hey, I'm the MVP, let me do my thing, and I'll carry my team to victory, which he did tremendously. Uh, Green Bay's back. I mean, they did they did start off slow in the first half, the first few games, but now they're coming back. You know, huge win over Chicago in Week 2. They're proving they can hang with the best of them. If it wasn't for, you know, a bad call by the refs, they'd be 4-2 and two right now. Alright, and now let's get to the cold players of the week. My first cold player is Phillip Rivers, quarterback of the San Diego Chargers. Now, he did the opposite of Peyton Manning. He was good in the first half of the game, but in the second half, uh, three picks and two fumbles. And both of those fumbles were recovered by the Broncos, and one of them was taken back for a touchdown. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty bad. He was playing like Michael Vick that half. But uh, like I said, the first half was pretty good, threw for two touchdowns. Um, but, you know, it's what you can do for me now. And he did not do anything in the second half. My number two cold player was Adrian Foster of the Houston Texans. While he didn't play bad and still got two touchdowns, he averaged less than two yards a carry. I believe it was 17 with about or 17, 18 carries with about 20 some yards, maybe 30. I'm not mistaken. Now, like I said, he didn't play bad, but he didn't play good either, and he definitely didn't help his team have a chance of winning the game. And my number one worst player of the week, Alex Smith, quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Now, he's been a big reason why they've been winning, not just their coach, but he's been a really big help. I mean, he has probably the best turnover differential in the NFL when it comes to quarterbacks. I mean, he doesn't throw interceptions that much, but this week he threw three of them. And that really hurt the 49ers' chances of beating the Packers. Or, not the Packers, excuse me, the Giants. Unfortunately, just couldn't get it done today. And that's why he's my cold player of the week. And now in this part, I'm going to go over my game of the week and then just do speed picks for the rest of them. My game of the week is Baltimore heading to Houston and a team in a battle of 5-1 and one teams. Now, before Ray Lewis's injury, I would have given the edge to Baltimore. But I think with Ray Lewis and Terrell Suggs and a lot of different injuries on the Ravens, I don't think they're going to be a Super Bowl contender anymore. I mean, Ray Lewis was the heart and soul of that team. I mean, just like Derek Jeter was the Yankees, and you saw how that worked out. Unfortunately, I give the edge to Houston this game. I think they're going to uh, definitely win. Not quite a blowout, but I'm, I'm seeing a two-score differential here. And now, for the rest of my speed picks. I have the 49ers over to the Seahawks. I have the Cardinals over Minnesota. I have the Cowboys over Carolina. I have the Saints over the Buccaneers. I have the, Pack, I have the Packers over the Rams. I have the Giants over the Redskins. I have Buffalo over the Titans. I have Indianapolis over Cleveland. The Patriots over the Jets, Oakland over Jacksonville, Cincinnati over Pittsburgh, and the Bears over the Lions. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this first video. Uh, hopefully, as I do more of these, I'll get better. I know I kind of fumbled here and there in places. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, I'd appreciate if you leave a like. And if you want to talk about football, don't be afraid to leave a comment. And lastly, don't be shy. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. God bless.